But first up, he is the founder of the Rainbow Push Coalition. When Charlottesville happened, I was watching it on TV. I said, you know who I want to talk about this? I want to get him on. Jesse Jackson, everybody. <laughs> Reverend Jesse Jackson. Look at that, Jesse. Okay. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to do a stage dive, are you? I mean, I. <laughs> All right. So, listen. Um, I'm you, nervous. You're nervous? Why? You've never done this? It's been a while. Fake news. Fake news. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But uh, listen, I, I meant what I said. I was watching that that Saturday, and I was like, you know who I got to hear on this is you. Uh, you worked alongside, of course, Martin Luther King. You were there at the moment of the assassination. Um, and this seemed like, I mean, his quote, it's the letter from the Birmingham jail. I'm sure you know it better than all of us. He, he once said, and I thought it was apropos to this situation, he said, I have almost reached the regrettable conclusion that the Negro's great stumbling block is not the Ku Klux Klanner, but the white moderate who is more devoted to order than to justice. The, the context... Well, that were those who hypocritically are embarrassed by behavior that's, that's ugly, with vote in other directions. For example, there are those who uh, uh, decried Trump's statement about, a non-statement about Charlottesville. Right. But they also voted for Jefferson Beauregard Sessions to be attorney general. The Jefferson Beauregard, right, the attorney general. Brigadier, named after Jefferson Davis and the general, the Confederate general, that's right. Be Beauregard. Yeah. There are those who are against Trump's statements, but then vote for shift health care money from the poor to wealth care for the rich. Right. They, they are, they're moderate. They're nice guys. They don't like to be, they're, they're embarrassed, but they're not change agents. And Dr. King said, we need change agents, not just people who are embarrassed, because that's personal. What, what, you know... We saw these people marching, and they were, you know, they were not wearing the hoods. They were carrying the tiki torches and the sometimes Nazi flags, shouting horrible things. But we saw their faces, and in this day and age, you can match those faces. We could look these people up and probably get them fired at their jobs. Is well, that a wise uh, thing? Well, they feel emboldened. They feel they have protection from the, from the White House. Right. And that is a lot of, lot of strength to have. Today, Arpaio, the sheriff of um, Arizona, was pardoned uh, in, in spite yeah, of his tonight. Yeah. record on immigration, in spite of his racial profiling. And so he, they feel protected by the president. And so when he put more focus on being a, a fan of David Duke than Heather Haya, that says something about the climate in the country that's poisonous and we deserve... We deserve much better. Um, I read a poll that said 45% of Trump fans, his voters, uh, think that whites are more discriminated against. They, that they are the most discriminated against. And Christians are the religion that's most discriminated against. 54% said that. You got to have a special kind of chip on your shoulder as a white Christian to That's think you're else. the one who got dealt a bad hand. There may be something else going on, though. Really, 78% of Americans, 78% live paycheck to paycheck. 51% make $30,000 a year or less. There's a deep sense of anxiety where you've had, we've globalized the economy without any sense of care for these persons. They feel locked out. And they feel, and they start skateboarding. Well, my problem is the Muslims are coming. My problem is the Jews are coming. My, and so they are, they are being exploited, but there's tremendous economic anxiety that must not be ignored. Okay. Um, let me ask you about some other issues that are in the news. Uh, Colin Kaepernick, I want to know what you think about that. Because, first of all, I predict he's going to get picked up by a team. It's becoming too big. <laughs> he's, well, he's actually not a bad player. And... The fact of the matter is he should have the right to express himself. He's not burning a flag. 
He's not, he's not, hustling, he's not hustling drugs for teammates. He's not shooting people with, with guns. Uh, Jack Robinson once said that he would not salute the flag nor sing the national anthem because he felt it was not protecting him. That's Thomas Smith and John Carlos at the Olympics showing their fists. Right. That's all he said. I will not go to the war because... Muhammad Ali, right, did not go. You know, and, and so there's a lineage of athletes who've taken their stands. That is, Kurt, the reason athletes get all of this super money today because uh, Kurt Floyd said he would not be sold. Uh, he had the right to sell him. So all the free agents that come from a guy who stood up. So maybe the uh, Cape Nick is that one guy who stands up. He should not... The, the owners have colluded. They have decided to not let, not let him play, and he should have the right to play and express himself at the same time. And, and it just seems so mean-spirited. I mean, considering you know, how black people have been treated in this country, the whole stadium should get on their knee <laughs> for the national anthem. Well, I, I think yeah. that... The silence, the silence of the um, Players Association is a kind of betrayal. They're too silent in light of what they face. They always face some issue that affects them personally, but never quite as noble as the issue of, of uh, Kaepernick. He's saying that blacks are shot down and it was lied about until the, until the cameras exposed it. He said that's not right. Uh, when, when you look at the case of Trayvon Martin killed and the killer walks free. Look at the case in Ferguson, Missouri, and the killer walks free. Somebody says black lives matter. He says it's not right. We deserve equal protection under the law. We should honor Kaepernick. Um, but here's my last question to you. Uh, I agree with that, but Steve Bannon, who just left the White House, uh, his, his exiting statement was, I hope the Democrats keep pursuing identity politics. Race is a loser for them. They play that card, and we're going to kill them in the next election. What do you say to that? Well, Hillary put Have the Democrats played identity politics too much? No, we live in a multiracial, multicultural society. Hillary won by three million votes. Trump lost by three million votes. When, when the... Um... When the Republicans want to embrace the statues of Confederates who engaged in secession and slavery and segregation and sedition, that's a dent politics. Uh, when they have no regard for the rights of immigrants, uh, they will build a wall between us and our next door neighbor, Mexico. Uh, they suggest that a, that a, uh, a federal judge who's Mexican cannot dispense justice. That's a dent politics. And so we fight for gender politics. In race politics, we fight for multiracial, multiracial, multicultural society, and it's the right thing to do. Thank you for coming here, Rev. You're an icon, and you deserve to be. Jesse Jackson, everybody. All right, let's meet our panel. Thank you, Bob.